Well, hello and welcome to I Love Gay Today. And we are with Art Smith, who joins us from Tampa, Florida. How are you, Art? I'm doing great. How are you today? Fantastic. You and I have been connected for years online, so I feel like, uh, I, feel like I know you already. Yeah, likewise. It seems like um, we should have been hanging out having a cocktail talking about this. Well, well someday, someday when all this uh, COVID stuff clears up, we will. Excellent. But, um, yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself, because I know you're from, uh, uh, you've got this incredible history in the LGBT community in Atlanta before you ended up in Tampa. Yeah, in the mid to late 80s, I was asked to um, take over a monthly gay magazine in Atlanta, which was called The Guide. Okay. And um, so I was suddenly immersed in the world of being gay um, in the 80s and had to come out to networking contacts and people I met socially basically by outing myself. You know, back then it was a, a different environment. Um, and I got involved in a lot of different things uh, in the gay community back then. I was involved with Atlanta Pride and a lot of the fundraising events and getting to know all the business owners. So it was, it was an eye-opening experience. Yeah, wow. And then uh, 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 before even what you're doing today, you've, you've spent quite a uh, bit of time on video as well, where you, were, you, were, you told me you were doing like a, video show, but then also you're continuing to do that even from, from Tampa. Yeah, I am. Um, I work with a friend of mine named Dick Wolfley, and he started a, uh, an internet gay channel called channel125.com. Yeah. It's been around for about 20 years, so it's one of the older um, gay sites on the internet. Yeah. And um, we record a lot of different uh, gay-relevant events. We have a lot of pride footage on there. We have a whole channel of information about uh, some of the pride festivals we've attended and interviewed with with people that were at the events that's excellent is any of that uh uh was, is it on youtube today or facebook or There's twitter or some of it on youtube we do share a lot of it on facebook but you can okay. go directly to channel 125.com okay and uh it's all there yeah and no, i'd love to check that out and, and uh but now t tell us about, because uh, uh, we've been chatting for a little while on your, on your latest project with uh, these bar logos. Tell us about that. So at the end of last year, I was having a conversation with some friends in Atlanta. Yeah. And uh, one of them was the owner, or one of the owners, of um, the most iconic gay bar in Atlanta, which was called Backstreet, yep. which is the shirt I'm wearing right now. <laughs> and um, she had mentioned that this year, 2020, uh, was the 45th anniversary of the opening of that club. Okay. They opened in 1975 and we talked about doing a fundraising t-shirt. So I worked with their logo. I digitized it because, you know, files from 1975 are not the best digital quality. Yep. Uh, they're basically photocopies of print ads. <laughs> and, um, and I introduced the, um, the t-shirt design yep. to commemorate 45 years since they opened. And it was a fundraiser for the Atlanta sisters of perpetual indulgence. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, and it went really well. It, it sold very well. And um, gradually, you know, after talking to people about it, I said, you know, there are a lot of other bars from the 70s and 80s that a lot of people talk about and you reminisce about them when you're sitting around, you know, socializing. Yeah. And I started to recreate other ones, um, contacted the owners when I could. And I ended up with about half a dozen by March. Yeah. And then this COVID thing hit and I was sitting at home and I said, what am I going to do? My social media uh, clients didn't have much use to promote a whole lot on social media. Um, the retailers I was working with, a lot of them were closed down. And I sat there and I said, I'm going to work on reviving this t-shirt project. Yeah. So since March 15th, which now is about what, four months. Yeah. Um, I have researched and recreated the logos of over 450 bars that are now defunct uh, that existed in 25 or more states in the U.S. Yeah, yeah. And um, they get a lot of feedback. I can't tell you how many emails I get that say, wow, thanks for bringing back those memories or, you know, mm -hmm. it's really cool. That's where I met my husband 20 years ago. Yeah. Sounds, so sounds cool. to me like one heck of a history project you've got going here that, uh, I would anticipate that whether it's uh, Stonewall Archives in Fort Lauderdale or the one Ar one institute out of Los Angeles, the first two that come to mind, they would probably love to work with you on figuring out a way to showcase those. Yeah, I've been contacting some of those organizations and ultimately what I'd really like to do is um, I'd like to take 
as many of them as I can and maybe create like a coffee table book that features some of the logos and a little bit of history because there's a lot of history in gay bars. And um, as you, as you know, yeah. back in the eighties, that was our social life. Those were our safe havens. Oh, yeah. um, and it continued on nineties, two thousands. And in some places, including, especially, like I said, Fort Lauderdale and, and others, it still is the anchor for the, the gay community there. in a lot of these cities. Right. Absolutely. Wilton Manors is like, you know, gay central. Uh, I don't think you can spend a day there without going to a gay bar. I don't think it's possible. <laughs> no, that's amazing. And so uh, what we'll do is, is make sure that uh, uh, when we're promoting this and, and posting this video, that uh, link to everything you're working on on social media and uh, so forth is, is readily available so that people can find you. And, and hopefully there'll be other bars that might want to contribute to uh, your project as well. I certainly hope so. One of the things that, you know, because of the lockdown, all my research has had to be, has to be done online. Yeah. You know, you can't really go to an archive and sit there and flip through the pages right now. And um, so by getting information from people online, you know, there's so many groups on online that have, um, I love, uh, I partied at Backstreet. Yeah. Thousands of people belong to that group. Yeah. So, you can go into that group and you can start a conversation and get information, but it would take a long time. I mean, I've been spending 10 to 12 hours a day for four months doing this. Yeah. Yeah. So by putting it all together, it makes it easy for the next person who comes along and says, Hey, you know, I wonder what kind of gay bars they had, you know, in New York city 30 or 40 years ago. Yeah, and especially the big cities where they like to change change bars every few years because uh, people get bored. So yeah. I can just uh, I took a photo. This is a very much a side note, but I was in front of the limelight uh, over this uh -huh. past weekend. Posted the photo on Facebook, and it was just funny. It really seemed to have touched a nerve because uh, a positive one because people were really posting all their all of their reminiscing histories of of that exact same club because it was iconic. It was an old church turned into a nightclub, and wow. now it's a now it's a pizza joint. Now, in the t-shirt collection, I have not included Limelight. Um, and not because I didn't want to, but because um, I was asked not to. Oh, wow. So. Well, we know there's a story there. So <laughs> we'll, uh, that'll, be, uh, that'll be through one of the Facebook groups. So. Yeah, Peter, it was Peter Gation's daughter who okay. said, please don't, please don't do it. Yeah. And, okay. I know. Well, you got I feel like I'm sure there's plenty of other, others that would want to participate. So, uh, but you know, New York's a funny place when it comes to things like that. It is. <laughs> now, you're in New York now, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just outside of New York now. I was living in the city in, uh, in Harlem and now I'm uh -huh. just, uh, I'm just outside, uh, move, I bought a house and moved out just in time. Cause, uh, it's much easier to, to quarantine out here than it would have been to be in the city. I'm sure. Well, one of the oldest bars in the collection is from New York. Um, and it just gives you an idea, a perspective on, on how our community evolved. Yeah. Um, it was in the 1850s and it was called FAFS, P-F-A-F-F. Wow. It was a uh, German owned restaurant with a basement bar. Wow. And, um, back in the day you could go down under the sidewalk and there was storage rooms under there, which he had converted into a little bar. And it became very well known as a gay hangout in the 1850s and 60s. Wow. So that's 150 years ago. That's <laughs> that sounds like the bar in uh, Florence, Italy. That is uh, the famous original gay bar in that city is probably about just as old. And yeah. it's under the main plaza and square where the Statue of David is located. And, it, and uh, uh, yeah. it's like a secret entrance. And uh, I found it once and I never could find it again. <laughs> well, I know. Maybe next time. <laughs> Someday. But no, this is wonderful. So I really appreciate and thank you for uh, being here with us and sharing some part of your story with our audience. And uh, like I said, hope uh, we'll post the links and I'm hoping that uh, this project will continue to be able to grow and, and, uh, and we'll see where it goes. I hope so. I've been working my butt off on uh, social media as well, trying to get the word out and joining a number of groups, you know, Gay Wisconsin or wherever. So I can kind of get the feedback from people around the country and around the world. I'd, I'd like to go international, but I don't really have that many of the contacts lined up yet. So. Yeah. Well, one step at a time. But right. this is amazing. So thanks for being here with us. Thank you, Matt. All right. Good seeing you here. Likewise.